Good evening. Welcome to the second IJ Lobby Lounge Live show, our showcase of young musicians. Thank you. Thank you. So as we wrapped up our first season, I was, I'm Paul Libertor, by the way. Um, as we wrapped up our first season, I was struck by uh, what a difference a year makes. We started in 2014 having uh, young performers come into the lobby of the, of the newspaper. And uh, we did it all ourselves. We did the sound, we did the lights, we had no idea what we were doing, but we did it anyway. And somehow it worked. And um, that first season was uh, mostly about young singer-songwriters, mostly young women, uh, including uh, Caroline Skye, who was 13 when she came into the lobby lounge. Yes, sir. Yep. And so she went from, um, from our little lobby to uh, national television on NBC's The Voice and did quite well. So that's the kind of caliber of performers we have. We have a, a young singer-songwriter tonight uh, who will be uh, towards the beginning of the show that uh, it's right in the same league as Caroline, so that'll be very special. Um, for the second season, we outgrew the lobby and we moved into the Community Media Center of Marin and San Rafael with Alejandro Palacios and his gang there helping us out shooting our videos there. And um, this is kind of the year of the big band, big ensembles. Uh, we do have some, especially in the first part of the show, more intimate acts, but um, you're gonna see some, a lot of firepower up here with some bands. We went on the road for the first time ever uh, to do a remote shoot at Davidson Middle School to uh, do a video recording of their Drums of Fire Steel Pan Band. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and they're here tonight. Where will you hear them? They're absolutely fantastic. And we went on the road again a second time um, because we could not fit the Drake High School uh, jazz band, the award-winning Drake High School jazz band, into that studio. It's only, only 29, 30 pieces, that's all. I don't know what the problem was, but we went on the road to record them. They're here tonight, and they are um, closing the show, so make sure you stick around. They're fantastic. It'll take you right back to the 30s and 40s. And anyway, thank you again for coming out on a school night to support these kids. They really, uh, they deserve our support. They're fantastic. So first up is um, a young violinist. He comes from the Marin Symphony Youth Orchestra. His name is Jake, Jacob Hirschman. And um, he knew he wanted to be a violinist when he was about two years old and he saw Elmo playing a violin on Sesame Street. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he told me that he took a couple of chopsticks and pretended that was his violin. And then I think he started playing in earnest when he's four. And you will see what has become of him, how, what a virtu young virtuoso he has become. So uh, let's bring him out now. Jacob. What are you, you going to be playing for us first? Uh, the first piece I'm going to play is the Bach, the prelude to the Bach partita uh, in E major. Thank you. 
I'm going to be playing another piece, which is the um, cadenza to the uh, first movement of the Mozart Concerto in G major. Jacob Hirschman. He's amazing. He's so cool. I think Elmo would be really proud of him, don't you? As I mentioned uh, in the opening that uh, we've had a lot of um, very fine young singer-songwriters uh, in the first season of the Lobby Lounge. And although the second season is heavy in the big band department, um, we do have a, a really outstanding uh, young singer-songwriter in Sarah Herzog, who um, she came into the lobby lounge and did three of her original songs, which she'll do tonight. And uh, there's one song in particular. You'll, you'll know which one because you'll be singing it all night just like I did. You, know? you won't be able to get it out of your head. And she'll be accompanied by her uncle on guitar, Craig Herzog from the Machia Velvet. So ready? Yeah, so please welcome Sarah Herzog. In a room. 
room of children I am the young one But in a room of love I feel like the old one And I know all that you know is what you hear And I fear I'm sorry to tell you this darling But I'll take it from here mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This next one is called Forgive Me. I will never be lonely if I got myself. You, you'll always be lonely because you got everybody else. I love life more than you loved me. So please, please forgive me. I'ma get on my knees, I'ma beg you please, please forgive me I'ma give it my all till the day I fall, please forgive me I'ma give it a try till the day I die, please forgive me I would always be bored if you were in my mind You would always have fun if you escaped from all these lies I love life more than you loved me So please, please forgive me I'm gonna get on my knees and I beg you please Please forgive me I'm gonna give it my all till the day I fall Please forgive me I'm gonna give it a try till the day I die Please forgive me I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry for you I'm telling, I'm telling, I'm telling the truth Tell me please, tell me why, tell me how What can I ever do? Oh, please forgive me I'm gonna get on my knees and beg you please Please forgive me I'm gonna give it my all till the day I fall Please forgive me I'm gonna give it a try till the day I die Please forgive me I will never be lonely if I got myself You, you're always being lonely Cause you got everybody else I love life more than you loved me So please Thank you This next one, the last one, it's called Chocolates. You come crying to me, too much for me to handle. You messed up, I know. 
It's hard for you to deal with it, shut up, thank you Apologies don't mean much to me And I'm sick and tired of dealing with you So sit back, relax, cause I don't care anyway Leave me be for the world to see me like you did Come on, party's down, you did that too much anyway You and me and we, we're done forever till next time You come knocking on my door at midnight but there's no room for your mates Won't you crawl on home, no Mr. Desperate I know your mom is waiting up And I don't want you round my house again Unless you're leaving me chocolates So sit back, relax Cause I don't care anyway Leave me be for the world to see me like you did Come on, party's down You did that so much anyway You and me and we Forever till next time You say that you didn't do enough Well I say that you did too much Go to sleep now Don't wait up for me For me You come crying to me Too much for me to handle You must up I know It's hard for you to deal with it Shut up, thank you Apologies don't mean much to me yeah, I'm sick and tired Of dealing with you so sit back, relax, cause I don't care anyway Leave me be for the world to see me like you did Come on, party's down, you did that too much anyway You and me and we were done forever Till next time Thank you Sarah Herzog, let's hear it for her. So last Lobby Lounge, Lobby Lounge 1, <laughs> we, um, we had uh, Till Dawn, which was an a cappella singing group that were fantastic. This year we have a, another a cappella group, this one from, from San Domenico School in San Anselmo. It's the Advanced Vocal Ensemble under the direction of Leland Kane. Uh, I know Leland because I've reviewed um, some of her own CDs that she's done herself in uh, Press Play in the IJ. And um, I didn't know that she uh, had this fantastic group that she, choral group that she directs until she called me and said, you know, I thought she wanted to be on the lobby lounge, but no, she's got the, this fantastic group of kids um, who will be out here in just one moment. So, um, come on out. Yeah, sing this by myself. Aren't they beautiful? Ave from San Domenico School. Hi, everyone. We're Ave. Um, tonight we will be for be performing Nada Buddha Fera. It's a Yorta Yorta adaption from Aboriginal Australia, the native language. We are singing this as a medley with the song Yellowbird, and both of these songs are about freedom and victory over oppression, so I hope you enjoy. Did 
your lady friend leave the nest again that is very bad makes me feel so sad you can fly away in the sky away you're more lucky than me from San Domenico School. (laughs) 
So uh, this next group is um, a special group. It's going to take a few minutes to set up. So uh, what I'd like to do is talk to uh, Jane Kramer, who is the founder of Enriching Lives Through Music, uh, uh, an organization she founded in San Rafael's Canal District. So Jane, yeah, come on out here. Jane Kramer from... <laughs> So Jane, tell, tell, tell us the story of how Elm came about and why. What motivated you to start this group in 2008? Um, as a child, I was an oboist, and I was really passionate about music and didn't pursue a musical career. Went into academic health policy and studied adolescent health policy. And through my work, I, really, I realized what really helps adolescents become successful, which is passion and mentorship and having something that they really pursue with discipline. And um, I had an opportunity to take a year off my life, my um, career, to pursue a passion. And I decided to go back to my playing at oboe. And I wanted to start a school of music to really address those issues. But also, I saw a need in the canal that wasn't being met. And it blended with a passion of mine for playing the oboe and passing that music on. And I started really small. I started with 15 kids and did that pretty much for three years on my own. And grew it from there to now we have over 120 students. Wow. And I, I think you were telling me that there, there wasn't much music education in the schools. Is that right? Is that why you, the, the gap you were filling, the vacuum you were filling? Yeah, there are instrumental music programs in the high school and the middle school, but in the elementary schools, um, there's not a full-time music teacher in none of the elementary schools in the um, in San Rafael, and there's not instrumental music. So there's recorder, but they're not violins, cellos, flutes, clarinets, and that's a real gap because when these kids get to middle school, they haven't been able to um, you know, learn an instrument or even know what they'd like to do. And now our, our kids in our program starting cello and violin in second grade, by the time they get to middle school, they're gonna be really incredible. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And where do the where do the instruments come from? Uh, you know, the kids all have uh, uh, violins and cellos and flutes and things like that. Where, how, how did that? How did you get all that? You know, when we started so small, we had these first 15 kids, and someone would say, "Here's a, you know, do you want a flute?" And we'd say, "Yes," and we would put a kid on the flute, and then, so each of our top 15 kids, our oldest ones, all have sort of a one of a kind. They each have a flute and a clarinet. But as we got bigger, we realized that wasn't sustainable. And also, a lot of the instruments we're getting weren't um, as high quality or in good repair. And so I began to write grant proposals and would get a grant to buy 20 cellos and then 20 violins. And there's a wonderful foundation now that's really supporting our um, string instruments, not only buying them for us, but committed to repairing them so that they come once a year and repair the instruments. And now we're actually doing some um, teaching our parents to do violin, violin repair. They are working with our parents to oh, do wow. it. Oh, wow. That's great. Yeah. And um, so you have 125 st uh, kids involved now. And you were telling me the other night that one of them is your first graduate. T tell me a little mm -hmm. his story. Yeah. Well, I'm really proud of him. Yeah. His name is Willie Santos, and he's actually coming out tonight. Um, he was one of the first 15 who I started with. And um, now he's a senior at San Rafael High. He plays a flute and the saxophone. And he just graduated San Rafael High. He'll be the first one in his family to go to college. And he just got accepted to Sonoma State University. And he's planning to major in their new major um, of jazz education. So he plays classical flute. He, he plays classical flute and then jazz saxophone. And his parents and his little sister are here tonight in the back row. And his... Um, and his brother is actually a violinist in our program, too. So we're, we're extremely proud of him. He wants to come back and be an Elm teacher. And I'm hoping this summer he'll start teaching some of our students flute. That's great. It's really impressive. That's a great yeah. So how are they doing back there? Are they, they're coming out? Okay. okay. Come on out. Thank you so much, Paul. So this is Enriching Lives Through Music, Elm.
So we're going to be playing you guys two songs today. Uh, the first song is very recognizable. It's the Looney Tunes Melody by Carl Stalling. So I hope you guys enjoy this. song today is The London Trio uh, by Joyce, Joseph Hayden.
trying to grab her from the audience to get her here. She was out there. And we'll give her the orange mic. Right? All right. Enriching lives through music. Elm, let's hear it for him one more time. Beautiful. And they'll be playing um, on Saturday night at 7 o'clock at the Mill Valley Methodist Church. It's a free concert, so if you want to hear them again and support them, then you can uh, show up to, to see them again. They're, they're quite fantastic. So um, I'm up here killing some time. Uh, <laughs> while we set up um, this next group uh, from San Jose Middle School in Novato. A group called Free Wi-Fi. And uh, <laughs> I asked him, why, why do you call yourself Free Wi-Fi? He said, well, everybody loves Free Wi-Fi, so. <laughs> of course. There you are. Hi, Paul. All right. This is uh, Benedetta Dalbesio. Yes. yes, Dalbesio. Dalbesio. Yes. She's a music director at San Jose Middle School and responsible for these characters. They're going to be up here in a moment. So th when, when we had them in the lobby lounge, they had just come back from winning uh, a major competition in Reno. Is that right? Tell us about it. Yes. Benedetta. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> um, eighth graders competing at the Reno Jazz Festival seven states and 15 middle school combos and one first place and out of 43, yes. <laughs> out of 43 jazz bands, our jazz band took third. So, okay. yeah, yeah. Oh, that was good. You know, and I was really impressed by how uh, devoted these kids are to, um, to, the, to their music. I mean, first of all, they play jazz. These kids play jazz, and you know, it's kind of progressive jazz. And they pick all their own music, yes. which I was surprised to hear. Tell us, tell us about that. I have not a lot to say about what they play. What they say, you? Miss D, we got this arrangement from Snarky Puppy and made this transcription. And do you know this and this? And this? I went, uh, yeah. He, the, well, we're going to play that. I went, OK. So they're, they're playing music that's just beyond what any middle schooler plays. And isn't that what the judges said in Reno? They were, they were yes, saying? Yes, they were just sitting there, jaws down, going, are you kidding? These, they're amazing. Their intelligence and love of music, and they're just always playing. So, yeah, I was I was impressed. They're jazz musicians, right? And I was told that they uh, show up at school at seven in the morning to practice. I said, well, you know, that's probably the last and jazz lunch musician ever did that. After school and at night and on the weekends, and that's all they do. And, yeah. so, and they play in other groups as well, yes, right? Yes, they do. And what's the other song they're doing? They're doing, uh, what's the first one that's called? Uh, Lingus. Lingus. Snarky Puppy. And then Catch Me If You Can. Catch Me If You Can. Yeah. So, um, shall we tap dance now? OK. <laughs> <laughs> so you're, how long have you been teaching uh, music? And 38 years. 38 years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And you were going to retire, weren't you? Yes, I was this year. And I was getting sad going, man, I love this. This is so cool, teaching music and these kids. Now, I'll keep going. Yeah, <laughs> they'll, they'll have to get the hook and get me off. <laughs> well, I'm glad. So. You and me both. I can't seem to stop. So, <laughs> anyway. so I think we're almost, we're almost together here. Um, well, thank you for having us, Paul. Oh, it's my pleasure. So, thank you. In a minute, free Wi-Fi. Hello, my name is Gibson Scheidel, and I play trombone and djembe for our sweet little combo thing we have going on here. Uh, 
Um, thank you for coming to watch. We're called Free Wi-Fi, because everybody likes free Wi-Fi. Come on. Um, we're all members from the San Jose Middle School from Novato, Jazz One. Um, myself, trombone. Uh, Logan Miro on tenor sax. Logan Musicant on trumpet. Aiden Baraban on alto. Uh, Zach Gersh on piano. Naomi Baraban on bass and Aiden McDonald on drums. Our first song we'll be playing for you is called Lingus by Michael League from Snarky Puppy. I hope you enjoy. Thank you. 
enjoyed Lingus by Michael League. Our next piece is going to be called Catch Me If You Can by Rick Hirsch. Thank <laughs> you. 
From San Jose Middle School in Nevada, free Wi-Fi. Let's hear it for him. <laughs> that was great. Well, we're going to take about a 15-minute break, if you don't mind. So don't go away, because coming right back after intermission is the Davidson Junior Middle School Steel Pan Band, Drums of Fire. So. See you in 15.
All right. Davidson Middle School, Drums of Fire. Let's hear it for him. Okay, guys. All right, Dana, you and I will talk for a minute. We have to take, it's going to take a minute to uh, get these machines off the, off the stage. So Dana Trillo, the music director, and I will chat for a moment if I can get him over here. <laughs> Come on over, Dana. Okay. <laughs> it's blowing me off. I can't believe this. <laughs> there you go. This, this is for you. I promised you one earlier, oh, so I've got to give you a shirt. Got my shirt. Oh. I'm putting it on. Right? <laughs> so, um, I mean, this is the sound they make is just such a joyous sound. I just love them, and I'm and I know it's not easy moving all this stuff. I mean, they have to have a truck and, you know, it was a big deal, but it was worth it. I, we went to them to do the video and they came to us to do the live show. So um, the Steel Pan program has been at Davidson for 31 years, which is an amazing thing. So, so tell, tell us how it started, Dana. How did it start? Um, if you go back to about 84, 85, uh, there's a man named Jeff Narell. He's local, and he's a, a very famous steel pan player, and his brother Andy Narell is very famous. And their dad, Murray Narell, um, kind of came out here and visited one time, and he knew a friend in San Quentin. And the man in San Quentin had to do a work project, so he made the first set of steel pans. And they used those pans over at Santa Venetia. And then when Santa Venetia closed with Davidson, the pans ended up at Davidson. Um, and then forgotten about. And then Miss Lusk came across him one time and, and decided to start a program. Was she a teacher there? Yeah, Miss Lusk was a, a legend of a music teacher at Davidson Middle School for a long time. Um, if you've been in Serenfell long enough, you've probably heard Miss Lusk's name in one way or another. Um, great choir and or I say orchestra and uh, band teacher. And then she got the steel pans going. She started with kids just before school, at lunchtime and after school, and then built up the numbers to the point where they started creating classes for it. And the, the first kids, um, they got teased a bit, didn't they? A lot. Uh, the first pans, they didn't look as nice as ours. They weren't chromed yet, and their paint jobs are just kind of shabby, and they were kind of left behind. So they did look like garbage cans. That's the best way most kids associated with it. Um, so they got teased for that a lot. Um, yeah, and then so <laughs> the pans got a little better look, and they got more respectability when people heard them playing, and they really liked it. Yeah, and tell, tell, tell us a little bit of how these kids learn to play. They, they don't have to learn music. Some of them probably do and play in other kind of school groups, but you don't have to learn how to play music. That's why the, it's such a diverse group. Is that right? That's true. Uh, if you ever watch the old Pete Seeger video about steel pans in Trinidad, if it's on YouTube. You want to check it out. Uh, he'll talk about how the traditional way for teaching steel pans is by rote. Somebody will either sing you the part or they'll show you the part. In our class, we have kind of a system that I've developed over the years. It uh, kind of works, kind of like we're programming the kids, basically. Um, we don't use any music notation at all. Um, and when I first got out of college, that to me seemed like uh, blasphemy. It, it seemed like not something you're supposed to do as a music teacher. Um, and Miss Lust kind of got me, uh, urged me to try it. And because the kind of kids that we got in seal pans at first were students who wouldn't normally do your band and orchestra classes. They didn't want to learn how to read music uh, or take an instrument home to practice, but they're very musical and they're very uh, capable of doing some really great things. So uh, they do everything by memory. So like my more advanced kids been, that I've had for about three years, they probably know about 30 or 40 songs they could play by, by rote. They play by rote. It's, real, it's really yeah. amazing in the way they play together and the yeah. teamwork and, and the diversity of the group. I mean, there's ESL kids, there's college prep kids, there's all kinds of kids involved in this. Yeah, it's, right. it's really a good cross-section of Davidson Middle School in our neighborhood and our community. So, you know, um, it really best represents, uh, you know, what we do at our school and what we do in the community. So, uh, really proud to be a part of it over these years. Yeah, I heard, I heard them at a farmer's market years ago, and I thought, you know, they were just fantastic then, and I just had to get them in the lobby lounge. Not exactly in the lobby lounge, because we couldn't fit them all, but, but um, on the lobby lounge anyway, so. Okay. Um, and I just want to say thank you so much for giving the students an opportunity to do something uh, so professional and so cool. Uh, the staff here has been wonderful, and playing here has been wonderful. The acoustics on the stage is so much better than our gym. I'll tell you that. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, we, and the, the Lobby Lounge, the IJ does, does this in cooperation with, um, in conjunction with uh, the County of Marin, Cultural Affairs, G Gabriella Clicchio and uh, her staff, Libby Garrison. And the guys here, if you notice, we have a lot of big bands, a lot of instruments, a lot of kids here. 
and it takes a lot to move them in and out and um, get it organ all organized, and they do a beautiful job. Tony, Joe, um, Dick, Steve, thank you very much. That looks dangerous. <laughs> So wait, wait, you know any uh, jokes or does, what? No. Uh, does anybody have any? Does anybody have any questions? Maybe about the program, uh, what happens with it, or how we do it, or uh, who's involved with it? Um, I'll give you a couple of things here to go with. Uh, we have we've had like three classes, like sixth grade, seventh grade, and eighth grade. So a lot of kids will start in sixth grade and go on seventh and eighth grade. What we decided to do this year is go seventh and eighth grade. Try to get a lot of those kids in beginning band, beginning orchestra, beginning choir, hopefully to get some music reading going with them, because we do know it's really helpful in, our, in today's culture to have some music reading if they can get it. Um, but where Davidson's doing a really great job now trying to get more kids into electives. Years past, with No Child Left Behind and stuff like that, 60% of our kids couldn't even have an elective. And so our principal, Mr. Marcucci, is doing a really good job trying to get more opportunities for the kids to get into elective classes again. So um, hopefully our numbers go up. And Dana, how, how long have you been teaching at Davidson or teaching? I've been teaching at Davidson 19 years. This is my 23rd year as a teacher. I like to tell people I've only been teaching for five years, so I'm 25, and this is what the kids do to me. But um, <laughs> <laughs> what, keeps you, what keeps you doing this? Um, you know, it, when you take the kids from sixth grade to eighth grade, and they're starting to make really cool sounding music, uh, everything kind of goes in levels. Um, and every time there's a new class, the sixth graders start over with. Right? Yeah. And you see where the eighth graders are going. Every year I take uh, uh, videos of my beginning classes and I show them to them in their eighth grade year to get to see how far they've come. It's a really neat thing to do. And you and Michael Morris. And Mr. Again. Morris, is, uh, we share the steel pan program. Mr. Morris is my co-worker. I do most of the bands at Davidson, the jazz bands, uh, the marching band at Davidson, and um, he does uh, the choirs and orchestras, and we share the steel pans. So let's, let's hear it for Dana Trillo and <laughs> Davidson. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming. Okay, next up, we're still setting up, but um, I can tell you a little bit about this is West Marin Kids Who Rock. Uh, <laughs> all the kids who rock in West Marin, rock in West Marin so it goes without saying. And um, they, uh, when they came in, they did a couple of songs, including one called Nitty Gritty by a group called Southern Culture on the Skids. And, uh, and the song, uh, you know, we, put, we posted, that's the way it works. We, we record the, the videos and then post them on our sites. And you know, we usually write a little story. I write a little story about them. And um, so uh, Southern Culture on the Skids, the actual band, uh, saw the video somehow and mentioned it on their Facebook page. So um, over 8,000 hits on, on these, for these kids for that song. And I think we're almost ready here, so I'll get out of the way and we'll make room for West Marin Kids Who Rock. Okay, so our first song tonight is Twist and Shout by David Lindley and El Rayo X. Shake it up, baby. Twist and shout. Come on, come on, come on, come on, baby. Come on and work it on out. Work it on out now. You know you look so good. You know you got me going now. Just like I knew you would. Come on, come on, come on, baby. Come on and work it on out. Yeah, now you twist a little girl. Twist a little girl. Yeah, now you twist so fine. Twist so fine. Come on and twist a little closer. Twist a little closer. Let me know that you're mine. Let me know that you're mine. Shake it up, baby. 
song is Nitty Gritty by Southern Culture on the Skids. Well, some folks know about it, some don't. Some learn to shout it, some won't. But sooner or later, baby, here's a dear to say you're gonna have to get right down to the real Nitty Gritty. Let's say get right down to the real one, two, the nitty gritty with a yo hoo hoo. The nitty gritty goes hoo right down to the real nitty gritty. Yeah. Whispering Kids Who Rock, one more time. So this group, um, I got an email from Chip uh, Boas, who is the music director there with Amanda Adelman, and uh, saying that, that, that the Drake High School jazz band had just uh, gone to Boston, to the Boston Heritage Festival, and, uh, and they took first place. The, the jazz band that you'll hear tonight was a first place winner. And they've got the pro trophies to prove it. I've seen them, they're like this big, they're really cool. I, I asked them to made to bring one, but I don't know if they did or not. But, um, and then the choral groups also did very well. They, they can tell you all the details if I can get them up here for a second. So, okay, we can, we can use one mic here. So Chip, tell us about the festival, what happened? 
It was, it was a really great experience. We went to Boston for five days with all of our performing ensembles. So we had our jazz band, our symphonic band, our concert choir, and our jazz choir. And we had the best time out there. They got to perform, but we also got to hear about six different concerts, everything under the sun from the Boston Symphony to a salsa band to an award-winning jazz saxophonist. We got to do clinics with musicians from the New England Conservatory and the Berklee College of Music. And then we got to play in the festival, which was pretty amazing. These guys sounded great, and they swept the festival. We were awarded with the uh, first place in the Outstanding Jazz category. We, the adjudicators picked us as the Outstanding Instrumental Program. We got the uh, adjudicator award for overall department. Um, we got, there was, <laughs> there was a ton of them. Four of these guys got nominated and awarded for outstanding individual musicians. It was a pretty crazy experience, one I will never forget. It was really fun. Yeah. And Amanda, maybe you could tell us a little bit about the, the vocal and choral part that you, that you handled. So we took uh, two of our vocal ensembles to Boston. It was the first time both groups had traveled together, um, both our concert choir and our smaller jazz choir, some of whom you'll hear tonight. Um, and the concert choir plays second, which was super exciting, and our jazz choir also plays second uh, in the festival, which was very exciting. Okay, and so Chip, tell us a little bit about the music. You know, what? one thing that struck me is this, this is the music my parents listen to. You know, I heard some of these songs that, oh, yeah, I used to hear that around the house. But tell us, tell us about why, you know, what, what that's all about. Sure, yeah. Well, um, you know, um, I think I can speak for Amanda in saying that uh, we're very, we really believe in jazz education as a very important part of our curriculum. We both have backgrounds as professional jazz musicians and understand what it takes to really understand the genre, understand the tradition. And our hope is that these guys go out into the world and carry some of that with them, whether they continue to play, which I think a lot of these guys will, or they don't. They still carry that love for the jazz tradition. So a lot of that lies in that core repertoire um, of jazz standards that we try to introduce these guys to and let them know the ins and outs of it, whether that's knowing the lyrics to the song, knowing the melody, knowing the chords, improvising over it. We're really uh, firm believers in authentic authenticity and staying with the jazz tradition. And these, we have some very studious musicians who are really owning that, and you'll hear that tonight. All right, I think we're all almost set here. Are we, are we ready, are you ready, Joe? Yeah. All right, so let's hear the Sir Francis Drake award-winning big band jazz. <laughs> Be smart, behave 
don't upset your guard when he's so close. Be soft, be sweet, but be discreet. Don't go off your feet. He's too close for comfort. Please, not again. Just when do I say when? Be firm, be fair, be sure, beware. On your guard. Take care while there is such temptation. One thing leads to another. Too late to run for cover. He's much too close for comfort now. How about a big hand for Devin, Eva, Daisy, and Julia on the vocals? That was a tune called Too Close for Comfort. Um, we're very fortunate to be able to explore both the instrumental and the vocal side of the tradition. These guys do such a great job with it. We're going to play a ballad for you that features our lead alto player, Sasha DeFrondeville. This is called Spring Can Really Hang You Up the Most. Yeah, give a hand for Sasha. Yeah. And wait till you hear him. Thank you. 
Thank you so much. How about another big round of applause for Mr. Sasha DeFrandeville? Hey, we've got one more for you, but before we, before we do that, I wanted to, um, how about a big round of applause and a big thank you to Paul Liebertor for putting this event on. Thank you so much, Paul. Um, it's pretty amazing to give young people opportunities like this and keep them motivated about playing music. It's really cool. And I wanted to invite all of you, like I was talking about at the beginning of this, um, Amanda, my co-director, and I really believe in providing authentic experiences for these guys. And so every spring we have a guest artist concert. And on May 31st, we're very lucky because these guys are going to be playing at Drake High School in the Little Theater at 7 o'clock with jazz legend Bob Mincer. Um, Bob Mincer is currently, has for the past 20 years, been playing with the Yellow Jackets, multi-Grammy winning uh, ensemble, has written for everyone under the sun and played with everyone under the sun from one of my heroes, Jocko Pastorius, on to, you name it, Dizzy Gillespie, Sonny Rollins, every jazz legend you can think of. And that he's going to be playing with us on May 31st, 7 o'clock Little Theater. Please come out and check it out. Um, but we're going to close off with a little more of these guys. This is something near and dear to my heart. This is a Latin jazz um, song called Manteca. This is going to feature Riley on tenor sax, Nick on bass, Harry on alto, and Josh on trumpet. This is Manteca. Yeah, give him a hand. Give him a hand.
The Drake High School Big Band. One more time. Come on. All right. That's our show for tonight. Um, 
on behalf of the Marin Independent Journal and uh, Marin County Cultural Affairs, thank you for coming and supporting Lobby Lounge and all these kids. So drive carefully, take care, see you next time.